Welcome everyone to our Board of Education meeting this evening. Would all rise, please, and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Start this evening with the presentation oh, by how to say that on our new district website. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so thank you for joining us tonight. We just wanted to take a moment to give our community a brief update on where we stand in the migration to a new website. We've been talking about this for at least a year and we've been doing a lot of work through this current school year and tonight we want to show where our progress so far in terms of where we stand with what's called a bad a beta or kind of a, a sandbox site. So about a year ago, we engaged our community in a survey. What do you like about our website? What's challenging about the current website? And it makes sense just to review quickly what the results of that were. One of our four goals that's based upon our vision and mission in the district is to engage in activities to increase collaboration and access from our community to our district. And so this is just one example of that. When we asked, when we looked at just our typical website use, we saw that most people are on there at least a couple times a week. And it's primarily used by our parents to gather information. So it stands to reason that we want information to be readily accessible and easy to find. But that historically was not the experience. What people are finding most frustrating about the current website is navigation and search functionality. I can't find what I'm looking for. Or something's not in the spot where I think it should be with some of that feedback. But at the same time, instead, where are they going to get information about our district when they can't find it on the website? They're going to social media. So that's why this past year, we've increased our, our presence on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, so that we could be getting out accurate information, knowing that that's where people were going to get information instead of our website. But we want to get that control back. We want people to come to our website and be proud of what that product is that we're putting out and be able to rely on us with those social media sites secondary to that to get information about our district. And where are people going? They're going to Facebook. And we know that we can only control content on Facebook to a certain degree. And so again, we want control over those positive things that are going on in our school. And I think that we found a solution to that. And then the rest of the survey was just kind of ranking what are the things that I do go to the website for. They want to know our event calendars. What's going on? When's it going on? Has something changed? The time of my child's game, the location, those kind of things. Um, and they need to have that at their fingertips. They'd love to see more pictures of what we're doing up here, more videos. And then they just had some general suggestions for the future website. At the top of that list, please develop something that's easier to navigate. So, we have worked uh, through Broom Tioga BOCES. As you know, they serve as our regional information center for the greater region that includes DCMO, ONC BOCES. Uh, Dodie Sherman is here with us today as a representative of BT BOCES. That's who we run the COSER through so that we can get aid back on a percentage of our use on this new website development. And then we have Nick Lewis and Jordan Kent with us. They're nodding their heads and smiling. Hey, guys. Um, from Aptigy. Aptigy is a third-party developer of websites. And so this is who we have been working with to present to you tonight kind of where we stand on a beta website for our, for our or on a beta site for our new website. Next steps following tonight's kind of little taste of this will be to re-engage a stakeholder committee to help us decide then what that end user experience will really be like. And we need a cross section of stakeholders to join us again. We met with them pretty early in this process, but we'd like to bring people back again to help us get into the weeds and really develop some of this. 
A lot of the content on the current website has already started to navigate over, but whether that remains as is or changes for the better is, is yet to be seen. So tonight is really just a small taste to give you an update because we haven't talked about this in a while. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jordan and Nick, uh, but before I do, I also just wanna recognize uh, Matt White from DCMO BOCES. He's done a ton of the legwork in organizing this migration, um, and Luke Patterziba has certainly participated in some of our meetings as well with Aptogee um, as we decide how to move forward. So Nick and Jordan, take it away. Thanks, Kelly. Really appreciate everybody. Um, so here, as Kelly mentioned, we're going to be looking at um, kind of a beta site. So what you're seeing, as she mentioned, is a small taste of what's to come. Obviously, there's still some engagement here from user groups, as she pointed out, to uh, just continue building upon the feedback. So essentially, what we've done is we've taken the first round of feedback, implemented that in kind of the framework. Next is going to be filling in the gaps, if you will, with regard to the actual content that's going to be shown here. Um, so one quick note, too, before we dive in, um, one of the neat things that uh, Kelly was bringing up earlier, too, we build websites, obviously, but we also build mobile applications. Um, for those of you that um, probably know this already, you're walking around with one of these. I'd imagine everybody has them within arm's reach at the moment. Um, that's 87% of folks are now visiting websites today on a mobile device. And so we build native applications for both iOS and Android as well. A lot of folks might be thinking, great, so this district has gotten kind of two projects here, a website and an app. Um, we built an easy to use interface on the back end that's going to help Matt, Kelly, and other folks at Delaware update not just the new website and mobile apps, but also your social media channels from one place at once. So this is going to really be an effort to align communication continuity in addition to getting a new app and website. Okay. Um, one quick thing before we have, uh, before I dive in here as well, this is a video that's going to load here, everybody. I know I'm on a screen share right now and I might crash the bandwidth, so I'm not going to hit play um, here just for the purposes of this demo so it doesn't get uh, skittish on your end. Um, but as we scroll through the new website, there's going to be a video welcoming folks there. We have a few quick links that, again, the stakeholder group is helping us identify as far as what those might look like to help parents and other community stakeholders navigate around the site. We have events, which was the most prominent piece of feedback that we got second to navigation, obviously. Then we're going to have two key sections here we call the live feed and news. These are going to be informative reference points for not just parents, but staff in the community as well. So this evening's live stream is already there live on the website. You saw that same post go out to your social media channels in addition to the live feed. So here in this top section on the website, we're really telling folks what's going on, right? We're creating kind of a narrative, what it's like for parents, staff, the community at Delaware. These two bottom sections then are really going to highlight and kind of sell the district. So what's setting apart Delaware Academy? So we're using a spotlight section that can be used in quite a few different ways throughout any given year. It could be a meet the teacher for new hires at the beginning of the year. It could be a section that's allowing us to thank folks that are retiring this year and moving on, right? Could also be student of the year or month as we're looking at things here now. Okay. And then an About Us section. Why not brag a little bit, right? Um, I know that sounds kind of funny, but in today's day and age, why not really you know, take a chance uh, to step back and pat yourselves on the back for all the hard work? Um, I know COVID has really made things a bit more challenging at the districts, and this is a good opportunity to highlight some of the things, again, that are setting you apart, but also really giving you some celebratory momentum there in the greater community. Last but not least, as we kind of scroll back to the top here, just to follow through with a few things that Kelly had mentioned, navigation. At the very top of the website, obviously we want to make sure folks can get to everything that's on the site. So we put the entire website's content behind one click in the menu. Again, this is one of the pieces that we are still working on. 
but that's where they're going to find everything. They're not going to be hunting through different buckets. In addition to that, we're going to have the ability to translate the website into other languages that folks might need, search as well. And then we're going to include some additional short links there we're referencing under the schools menu currently, um, just to make sure folks can quickly get from A to B. Can I jump in real quick, Nick? Absolutely, Kelly. Because I, this is the the display is a little bit hard to see, but just to um, kind of explain the experience a little bit. So when you first go land on this home screen, as you mentioned, this is actually going to be a video that shows, yeah. right? Um, yeah, you can kind of. It won't be choppy like this, but there's a video that gives you the experience of being on our campus, and. It's, yeah, it runs much smoother. Thank you. But on your landing page, this is kind of what the initial, the initial experience will be like. It's this video that really just tells our story of who we are and how you feel when you come to Delaware Academy. These quick button links at the bottom are quick links to Power School for Parents, Board of Education Updates, Athletics, the Arts, Transportation, Dining, and a link for our newly formed DAPTA uh, as quick links. And then, as Nick had said, other things will be quick and easy in that drop down menu. That second screen won't necessarily, it looked kind of boring, I know, but that's because it's still under development. That's not how it will look. But you'll, this will bring a completely different feel to the experience <clears throat> when you come to our website. Thanks, Nick. Sure. Awesome. So from here, everybody, what we're going to look at really quick, I'm going to switch my screen once more here, if it'll let me. And we're going to take a quick look at the mobile app. Trying to get my link, everybody, bear with me. It is not letting me. Sorry, everybody. Let me try one more time. Is that sharing for everybody now? It's, it's not it's giving coming me the in. There we go. Yeah. We got it finally. Sorry, everyone. So, as I mentioned there just a second ago, one of the key foundations of what we're trying to help schools do is a lot of communication. As you all are probably aware, there are a lot of different ways you, in the community, your parents, your staff, et cetera, can get information. Um, my wife follows Facebook to get all information for my daughter, who's a fifth grader. I don't have a Facebook account. So for the two of us to sit down at the end of the day and have the exact same information, that's pretty important. That same application is what you all are probably running into across various aspects of communication there at the district. Um, and I know it's something that Kelly has brought to light as well. Being able to really showcase your stories and make sure that the folks that are able to, or sorry, the folks that are there when things are happening are able to also share things is really what we're trying to focus on here at Aptigy. Um, so with that, in the mobile app, which again, this is, this is a full prototype, everyone. We have not released this, obviously, yet. So this is a complete mock-up. Um, on the home screen of the app, which will be for Android and iOS users, the very top section here, folks are going to see the four most recent things that have been posted as updates across the district. Okay. Additionally, there down below, there's a scrollable event section that folks are going to be able to flip through. They can tap on events, add them to their personal calendars, <coughs> share them with a loved one, or get turn-by-turn -turn directions to an event if it's happening off-site. And then down below, arguably one of the most important pieces here, everybody, what's for breakfast and lunch today? <laughs> Um, I joke about this, but literally every single morning, my daughter walks over my phone, types in my passcode, 
goes to the app for her school, and guess what she does? It's right there on the home screen. She's looking for the breakfast and lunch menu today. Um, so we make sure we put that all front and center for everybody. Obviously, this is something that parents are going to find helpful as well as staff. Right? Opening the menu for the app then, there's going to be obviously a wealth of additional information here where folks can jump in and see the entire feed, so not just the four most recent updates. The event section that they're able to navigate with uh, more on an event by event, month by month, so they can get those directions, etc. Um, scores and schedules, right, for athletics. We want to see what's going on, what the outcome was. Social media is something that we've still been talking with our, our group about, um, how we want to purpose that. One thing that's come to light as something that I think is super important is making sure that there's alignment between the app and the website. So we're going to have a menu item right here that says full website, just to give folks that familiar glance of what the website would look like on their phone as well, without making them close that app and go to Chrome or Safari or another app on their device. Those lunch menus, for those of you still thinking about those chicken nuggets, um, folks can jump in here and they can switch between the days, obviously. Looking ahead, right, so if I'm grocery shopping for next week as a parent, I can see what's on deck out there in front. The staff directory, this is going to be key. One of the focal points as well of some of the feedback that was received was being able to easily get in contact with folks there. So we make that very seamless whether that be an admin or a staff member. Parents, community members of the like can jump in, they can send an email, they can call the school if they need to, um, to get right in touch with that fo those folks. And then documents. I mean, here we're at the board meeting here this evening. How nice would it be for those of you that are attending with your phone to be able to pull up the agenda for this evening's meeting right there on your device? Um, that's something that we're going to make available so that as folks are following along, they're able to do so in an easy way, not having to chase information down. Okay. With that, we're going to have a few other items that are able to be added here that, again, we're still engaging with stakeholders on you know, identifying what those might be. Um, Power School, I know that was identified as a really important thing Kelly had mentioned. So we're going to make sure some of those key high traffic items are also making their way to this list, but while also keeping it lightweight so this app remains easy to navigate. So to kind of follow up with next steps there, I know Kelly had a little bit more that she wanted to share on kind of where we're going to take it from here. Great. So the other piece this allows us to do is a one-stop shop for information. So not only is it on the website, but when the district uploads something, right now we upload it to the website. Then we send out a mass email. Then we put a thing on Facebook. And then we put a thing on Twitter. This on, there's a back end to this that allows us to make one entry and it immediately pushes it out to all of those platforms simultaneously. So the, the frequency and the speed with which people can gather information from this will be much, it will be seamless and quicker and right at our fingertips. Uh, so we're really excited about this. Just wanted to give a quick glimpse today uh, there's still a lot of detail that needs to be worked out. However, we do have a pretty rigorous timeline. We're shooting for, for the end of June uh, to really have this at its inception. So we'll be pulling together that original stakeholder committee over the next month um, to help to inform the further development and the detail of that as things are brought over. And then we'll have um, hopefully a more complete and live website to share with you um, in the near future. I think we got it all. Nick, Jordan, Dodie? All right. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Great to see you again. We'll be in touch. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, any quick questions? I may not have all the answers at this point because there's still work to be done, but Kim? One quick question. So, does this affect power school notifications? Will I still be getting notifications? You will from power school. school. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yep. You might have mentioned it before, but what is the cost of this? 
It's, it's a little bit more than what we are currently paying for the old website, but not significantly more when you consider what we're getting back on the... Um, um, Coaster? On the coaster. Thank you. On the aid back on that. So, Carrie, do you remember? It's been a while since we looked at, since we signed the contract on this. Yeah, it's all right. I don't want to put you yeah, on the spot. Yeah, it is split over two years to the two plans, though. Right. We're right. also dropping a portion of our call call system, am I correct, for the two pieces to that? Is it one, or was that the website side? That was the website, website. side. Right. Or not the website, the student information system side. I could get the exact numbers for you if you're interested. Um, but we did look at the cost differential between the two and the added benefits that we get from this easily justified a little bit of the increased cost. And it was still well within what was budgeted for. This looks, it looks easier to navigate for sure. It looks like it's that. Um, one of the things I'm wondering about, does it give us any, I like how it, it connects to the other platforms, so it just kind of all goes, I think that's really good. But it's it's thinking about the process when something changes, how do we quickly get it mm -hmm. to that? And that's kind of something that I know is difficult. If it's after four o'clock or hours, you know, if the location of the whatever is changed. So it's right. updates that people would go to a website for. Yeah. And is is that made more readily available to people that can put content up or Yes. Yes, we will have the ability to give different levels of authorization to go in right from your cell phone and make on-the-spot adjustments. So, you know, if, if Jeff is at an event, Jeff Ferrar is at an event, or, or you know, whoever it might be, and there's a last-minute adjustment, he'll have the ability on his phone to go in and get an immediate update out through all the platforms simultaneously. I think that's great because... So it's all assigning the authorizations. If we're wanting people to not go to... Facebook, because it's kind of like a community bulletin board kind of thing. And yeah. The training to go there would just be important. You know, That's the that goal. has the most up to date, you know, kind of real time information. So if the location of something is different. We want to. And have that's it. been a frustration, and and yes. we heard that. Right. And so that's that's one of the things that we focused on by. It's one of the considerations that we had when making a lot of these decisions. Okay. Good. So great. All right, more to come. I was going to say, I'm glad you explained the initial uh, view, because I was thinking, why would anybody want to look at our roof? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a still of the video. Anybody else? Yeah, like, yeah. I can't wait to show it to you live, because it's just, it's, it's a beautiful, uh, Matt actually worked on the video, and it really showcases who we are. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's something that we'll be really proud of, so. All right. Thanks. I had the same thought. Okay. Yes. Yes. So I wanted to explain that real quick. <laughs> it looks a lot like the current website. And now we'll have a presentation by our senior class members on the student code of conduct and fact checks. Um, my name is Sylvia, and this is Tommy. Um, we want to thank you for listening to our presentation today and for listening to our proposal. So the proposal we are making is that we change the code of conduct as it relates to the backpack policy. Tap right on it. Sorry. Magic finger. Yeah, there we go. Um, so at DA, there is a tremendous ethos of forward thinking. Our district not only wants to achieve academic and civic ex excellence, we want to lead in that excellence, preparing students to excel in a diverse and dynamic society. We want to be able to adapt and embrace change confidently, both for our peers and for ourselves. We want our friends and underclassmen to have the necessary resources to engage in learning seamlessly so that our alma mater be a great place to learn for a great many years to come. And when it comes to improving student performance and outcomes, we believe that one resource, the Humble Backpack, will go a long way towards streamlining and strengthening student workflow. We just need a minor, minor policy change to unlock its potential. Um, so our mission is that we will obviously enter society with the ability to embrace change with confidence, altruism, and adaptability. Um, and that clearly aligns with the district's goals. 
Okay. So the current language of the code of conduct says that all backpack, book bags, except district issues, Chromebooks, and iPad cases must remain in lockers for the duration of the school day. Our proposed revision is that all backpacks, book bags will be treated as extensions of students' lockers while on school grounds and may be subject to checks based on reasonable cause by administrative staff or their designees. Student may choose to carry a backpack between classes, provided that one, in classrooms, backpacks will be stowed in teacher-designated areas, which will not interfere with the clear pathways for fire egress. And two, backpacks will not be left in the corridors or common areas outside of classrooms. Um, so the current language um, basically forbids students from carrying backpacks to and from classes during the school day. Uh, however, the prevailing student perspective on this rule is that it is unjustified for a number of reasons. Accordingly, we propose a revision to the rule that would lend students flexibility without squashing administrative authority to check backpacks. Uh, this proposal has already gone by the district's legal counsel, and this is the language that they returned to us. Um, so the new language would treat backpacks as an extension of student lockers, meaning that backpack searches by the administration would be justified by the same informed consent which justifies random locker searches under the current policy. Um, our current rationale is that the driving force behind this proposal, um, um, basically students have made the tumultuous, tumultuous years of pandemic, they've made it through, um, and this is something that we've had throughout the pandemic. And we found that it, using the lockers was suspended, and when backpacks became a necessity, not only did carrying book bags allow students to come to classes prepared with the basics, but it meant they could also come prepared to many to classes um, with many convenient incidental items that wouldn't otherwise have thought to carry with them. We adapted, and that adaptation proved so useful that many students feel that it should be adopted into regular practices. So of course, we would be remiss not to consider some concerns facing such a policy change, which is why our student interest group has worked so closely with Mrs. Zimmerman and Ms. Trask uh, to weigh the pros and cons while developing the proposed revision. So one of the first concerns we considered against the proposal was the issues of drugs in school. Obviously, backpacks can be used to move drugs around among teens, but banning backpacks will not decrease demand or address drug addiction. The unfortunate reality is that those who do use drugs easily circumvent the rule by carrying vapes or weed on their person or in their water bottles or computer cases. Meanwhile, everyone is penalized by an ineffectual blanket measure. Teachers and students alike are already aware of situations involving drug use, both overt and clandestine, which enforcement of the policy cannot prevent. We've heard of past instances of the use of marijuana at school dances, the use of alcohol from water bottles, and vaping in the locker rooms or bathrooms. The current policy is aimed at fixing the symptom of drug movement, but it can't do anything about the actual use itself. And in actuality, the policy isn't doing much, if anything, about drug movement. Uh, as for egress, we understand that the previous concerns regarding egress uh, during the pandemic were sort of waived because of you know, the extenuating circumstances. Um, and not being able to use lockers. Um, but on the other hand, um, egress during fire drills uh, in the case, oh, sorry, egress drills during the pandemic uh, did not prove to be issue prone. So that has shown itself to be a very great concern. Uh, and we do the drills so that in the case of an actual fire, it's not madness or just unorganized chaos, um, where you know we have a calm instilled in us because we've done the drills and we've done them so successfully. Um, so yeah, it's not like in a fire that people are going to be tripping over bags and, and losing their lives. Um, and additionally, the current policy is sort of causing an issue with fire egress in that the backpacks um, that people aren't allowed to carry around with them anymore are being left in the hallways, like on the ground. So that is actually uh, in violation of New York State Fire Code because corridors need to be kept clean of all obstructions. So uh, implementing this 
uh, this new measure would actually help prevent that because backpacks would be with students in classrooms rather than in corridors. And now for the main concern that actually started this policy in the first place, school safety. Before 1999, there weren't widespread rules against carrying a backpack, but with the Columbine shooting, many schools saw it fit to implement one. However, data from the past two decades does not support the efficacy of these measures, as you will see in a bit. Moreover, the measures do not actually address the underlying issues like mental wellness that are connected to school violence. Research by the Secret Service and Department of Education has shown that most attacks on schools are premeditated. What that means is that disallowing backpacks for everyone doesn't really make anyone truly safer. In simplest terms, we are holding students to a rule that would logically not stop the shooting. So these, this first graphic shows that uh, the weapon type used most in actual school shootings is the handguns. And this is data uh, since 1982 through 2022. Uh, so I mean, a backpack, sure. That can conceal a handgun, but so can a jacket, so can baggy pants. Like, that isn't. Banning backpacks is, again, like a blanket measure that will not actually truly address the issue of gun safety and school safety. And then it's also shown that school violence has increased every decade since uh, 1970, even following the implementation of that backpack rule after 1999. The trend has just continued upward. So some of the advantages. Um, there are students who prefer their day to be backpack free, and therefore they still make great use of the lockers. But a revision like this, as well as the return to a more normal school life, allows for a more favorable routine unique to each student group. This revision helps students adapt to school life in a way that best suits their needs and flow. And these are subject to change as the years go on and their classes and supplies change. But the liberty to decide their own comfort at school improves students' lives, such as with the student-school relationship, student-teacher relationships, and student-administration relationships, as well as much more. Um, finally, the most important thing that we believe is that making this revision would enable students to approach school in a way that better suits their needs. And what this proposal really boils down to is at the core of the district vision, preparing students to excel in their lives beyond high school. If students aren't even entrusted to carry their own book bags around and keep track of their own materials, how can we honestly say that that prepares them for college and their later lives when they'll need to keep track of not only their classes and education, but their dorms, their bond payments, and their homes? The data do not support the efficacy of the current policy, so it's time to adapt, streamlining both student workflows and administrative duties. This revision ultimately represents a welcome boost to quality life for students and admin alike. Uh, when was this, this rule suspended? You mentioned that it was suspended. Right, it was suspended during the years of the pandemic when classes were at home or like half and half. Uh, lockers were not allowed during those years because uh, uh, the thought was that they were too close together that they could uh, cause the spread of COVID. So lockers were suspended and uh, instead students carried back. I, um, I agree with you uh, that uh, backpacks do not s stop drug use or uh, or even weapons. Um, I don't know about the safety of uh, evacuations. If you had a classroom of 25 children and everyone had a backpack, I don't know if there's a designated area that a teacher could give that many backpacks and safely evacuate. Th that is a question I have. One thing you did not address is the weight of a backpack. As a, a parent, grandparent, I worry about the weight of the backpack on 
just your physical being. Sometimes they have everything in there, every book, so they don't have to go to uh, um, the locker. But I, I just don't know how that would bear on the physical state of the students. Right, well, to address the first part of your question, uh, like Tommy said, we practice these drills all the time. Um, I know I can speak for my experience. Everybody's usually very calm during the drills. If it did come to the fa uh, point where we had to move a backpack, I don't think that was something that would be necessarily an issue. Um, basically, it just comes down to responsibility of the students. And also, designated areas, um, we were thinking backs of the chairs. That would be off the ground. A lot of teachers have room in the back of their rooms uh, where we can set backpacks. Um, I know now, because of COVID, a lot of the classes have less people in them. So that that's especially a high school thing. Um, maybe not, I can't speak for any other classes, but um, there's less kids in the room, so therefore less backpacks. So uh, we don't foresee that being um, a huge issue because I think we, as a student body, we are responsible enough to take care of that. Um, and as for the second part of your question, I personally, I take a lot of different classes. I need textbooks, binders, a computer, all this different stuff that I need to take to all my classes. And sometimes I do, I carry a backpack. When, during the rule, I did carry a backpack and I carried all my stuff in that and then went to my locker halfway through the day and switched it all out and changed it all again. Um, otherwise, I would have to be carrying all that stuff with my arms, which, I mean, that could be just as straining to some kids. But it, definitely the combination of having a locker and a backpack would alleviate that stress. And you feel that there's enough room between desks to allow a backpack to go there and not infringe on the other person's desk? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think there's, I mean, maybe in some classrooms there isn't right now, but I think there's ways that they could be set up to a point where they could be like that, yes. And in fact, in some classrooms we have tables like these, so yeah. a backpack can easily be stored just at its own speed. And it's under the table, it's not in a pathway for egress. Ms. Trask did seek faculty and staff input um, on that specific question during a recent faculty meeting. And if there are have high school teachers in the room, I'm looking at you, Brian. I don't know if you were there or not. Um, but what I understand is that the response was, as long as we have some control over designating where they would be to address that concern, um, then they felt that students should have voice and choice in this matter. And they felt confident Nobody was was vehemently against this <coughs> proposal for that reason. I don't want anything not only for the safety factor, but as teachers go up and down aisles, mm -hmm. checking on work and helping to right. uh, all of a sudden have them trip over a, a misplaced backpack. And even during COVID, they weren't allowed to store them in aisles. They were either under desks or in a different part in the classroom, or up on shelves, or what have you. <coughs> So I just want to mention, I thought this presentation was very well thought out, very well prepared, and very well presented. So, very nice. nice. One question, are you asking for this change for the high school, for the high school and middle school, or for all the way down? So this amendment would be to the high school, middle school, student code. I, have, I want to thank you because one of my questions was going to be why why we have this policy to begin with, but you addressed that in your presentation, the reason why um, originally we have that, so thank you. Um, and my other question was going to be, were the, was the faculty and staff consulted on this and how do they feel about it? And I guess this would be more for the district. If a teacher needed um, something, I'm, I'm sure, like a table or something, or needed help figuring out, okay, all these kids are now... 20 kids are now bringing backpacks to my classroom. I don't have the space with the district. I'm assuming help this teacher figure out or where? Case by case basis. And, yeah. and we always, I mean, our approach to everything is we figure out a way. You know, ultimately we can't do anything that steps outside of, you know, state ed regulations, fire code, those kind of things. But with consideration for all of that, if there is a way to accommodate, we would creatively probably. Yeah, well, I just, I, probably overthinking this, but I'm just thinking, like, because I, I am a teacher, so if all of a sudden 
there are, it is becoming an issue with backpacks like all over the classroom to where I'm like having to step over to get to places. I might be like, okay, this is not working now. I don't want you to bring them anymore. I'm not, I just, I would fear, I don't want that to happen. So I would hope, um, you know what I mean, that they would reach out and say to somebody, say, this isn't working. Can you help me figure out what, what we can do and where we can put these? And keep in mind, we've been doing this for two years. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We've been doing this. This is not a huge yeah. change in practice. Okay. So what prompted this was coming out of COVID, we want to get back to normal. And I was of the mindset, as I had shared previously, that students want their lockers back. Right. Why would they not want their lockers back? <laughs> when we moved away from lockers, we got pushed back about with a concern, my backpack's going to be too heavy or, you know, a number of So I thought it would be a welcome change. And it wasn't. And I was quickly approached by our student body to say, wait, 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 this is part of COVID. We want to keep. So as we're moving into our new normal, I won't be surprised to, for our students to come forth and start saying, that did work for me. Can we keep that part of COVID, right? And so they're also not asking for all or nothing. The bottom line is we're asking for a choice. And that's, Luke, could you go back to the slide that showed the old language and the proposed revision? I agree with Sean that this group of students, and it's not everybody here. Um, we also had Amanda Nealis was in the room for this conversation. Certainly, uh, Abby was with us. Who am I missing? Um, David Reese. David Reese, right, was part of this. And these students gave a formal presentation to Ms. Trask and I in my office. And I gave them homework to do. I said, if you want to be part of the solution, I need you to research the fire codes for me. I need you to research you know, the concerns that we have that, that Tommy illustrated for us here. And they exceeded my expectations to the, to the point where I had language that all I had to do was take it to legal. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, I, I'm in full support of this because they've demonstrated exactly as, as they were wise enough to point out what our, what our vision, they're calling us to task here, board, <laughs> what our vision, what we have committed to here. Um, however, before any change can be made to a code of conduct, it does require a public hearing. So this would be to have an official public hearing, which is not a Board of Education meeting. But uh, an opportunity, and I'm going to ask our students to lead the public hearing and to answer questions just like they did here tonight. And then it comes back to the board for our first reading of the policy. I'm sorry, code of conduct. It's not policy, it's in our code of conduct. But it still requires a reading and then um, a resolution by the board before we can change language in a code of conduct. So, and that needs to happen before we can say it's official. So, uh, as, as you heard our seniors say to us, they're working hard for the future of their, their peers. They won't be able to enjoy the fruits of this labor with the exception of maybe not even a week because it's Regents Week. Um, but they've truly done phenomenal work and really did the homework and turned this thing inside out. I, I couldn't be prouder of, of the students who are leaving our doors here. Um, the point about the, the tardiness is real. I, uh, the last report cards that came home, one of my sons, I jumped all over them because um, I went into power school to kind of look at this. This my wife brought it to my attention, and he brought up that exact thing. He said, "I have to. I'm making more trips because we're not doing backpacks now, and it was more efficient to do I think what you mentioned, where you only are at your locker because you're not going to carry the stack, and it's hard to go back every time. So that is, I absolutely." Um, agree with that point because I saw that happen in the data. Um, I think it's an excellent presentation. What's our, what would be the timeline for? So I would this? love to bring this back for our first reading and resolution at our June 13th meeting, which means we need to schedule a public hearing probably in the first week, week and a half of June. If, would that public hearing be like questions can be asked to them? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Just just like we've done other public hearings, the budget hearings, for okay. example. Okay. Okay. Now this code of conduct would be for twelfth to sixth grade. This is the middle high school code of conduct. Correct. 
So the board has to agree to have it be a public hearing, and that's what we're doing right now. Because we're, yeah. Correct. Do we need a resolution for that? Yeah. So I, would, I would make a motion to have a public hearing to support mm -hmm. or explore the topic of backpack. Yeah. Um, re entry, re permission of use of backpacks. In, Lisa, make up some language then. <laughs> is it a provision of the, the language as it proposes to backpack use in the right. backpack? Yeah. Modification of photo contact language to include backpack use in elementary, middle, and high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a second. Second. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. The motion's carried. Okay. We're going to get you to your meeting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll take public comments now. Public comments submitted to the district clerk prior to the board meeting will be read. The board will not respond to the comments and questions during the meeting, but may refer to the appropriate administration to follow up with the individual submitting the comment. The Board of Education believes that open communication with our parents, students, teachers, personnel, and district residents is very important. For this reason, the board sets aside time at the beginning and end of each regular meeting for public comments. However, in order to focus on tonight's previously scheduled agenda, as a general rule, the board will not be able to respond to your comments and questions at this time. We may refer your comments and questions to the administration for follow-up, or we may add the subject of your comments to the agenda of a future meeting. Either way, please be assured that we welcome and take your comments very seriously. The board asks each person to limit comments to not more than two minutes, in order for the district clerk to maintain accurate records of the meeting, each individual is requested to state his or her name and address. Do we have any public comments? Thank you. I'll sneak around so I can. <laughs> <clears throat> my name is Mark Schneider. I'm a resident of Levine Center. Uh, my wife, Julie Hilson, and I have three children that have benefited from the DA school district. I'm here tonight to express my gratitude uh, on behalf of my wife and, and myself for some wonderful support that we recently received with uh, a, a somewhat sudden, thankfully not very serious, but somewhat acute uh, anxiety, mental health issues that my third child was experiencing as a kindergartner. And we, we are through the worst of it thanks to, in large part, to the school. But now we can joke around about it because we, we've raised three kids, but we've, we now say the first two really raised themselves, and now we're really having to parent with the third one, and it's a shock to us. And apologies to all those other parents in the world who had to do this with all their kids, and it's, it's hard work. Uh, so as I mentioned, our, our kindergarten son, Sid, he suddenly and at the time without explanation, had extreme anxiety about coming to school and went from gladly getting on the bus every day to having to physically push him to the door and he's doing one of these <laughs> trying to stop it and it was pretty traumatic for him. Uh, so I thought a way that I could demonstrate why we're so appreciative is to, I just wrote down a list because there are so many not individuals, but types of people in the district that that assisted sit through this. And I thought the length of this list is so impressive and some of the folks on it, I'm sure it won't surprise the board, but it's still worth celebrating. So these three at the top of the list were very central to helping Sid through this uh, anxiety. His classroom teacher in kindergarten, his elementary school guidance counselor with whom he made a wonderful connection, and the principal of the elementary school. And they were very active day to day for a period of a month or so to get him through this. Now, I'm going to keep going with different folks that helped him, and we'll see when you start to get surprised. I mean, it just amazed me. The teacher's aides, you know, the folks that greet at the beginning of the day, the folks that are in the hallway, uh, office staff in the elementary school, school nurse, uh, his specialist teachers, 
if that makes sense to all, right? His art and music and so on. Uh, other classroom teachers that he, in some cases, didn't know prior to this. The superintendent, who uh, has some expertise in this area and was able to be helpful. The kindergarten students, who who would come out to Sib and say, Sib, we're so glad you're coming to school today. We can't wait to have you in the classroom today. Uh, the school custodian. Elementary students who are not kindergarten students, who may or may not have known him before this. It's just amazing. So I think it's indicative of a culture that is very supportive, loving, and patience, uh, patient for both students and uh, for the family. So thank you very much. Very much. Are there any other public comments? I would just like to say thank you for my building. Thank you very much. Move on to routine matters. A motion, please, to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Education held on April 20th, 2022, as submitted. So moved. Yeah, thank you. And a second? Second. Or thank you. Any questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks. The motion is carried. A motion, please, to approve the minutes of the special meeting of the Board of Education held on May 9th, 2022, as submitted. Motion, please. Step and a second. Second. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? Okay, the motion is carried. Personnel recommendations. A motion, please, on the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the personnel recommendations as submitted and upon fingerprint clearance. So, again, thank you. And a second? Second. Okay. Well, thank you. Any questions or comments? We have some comments. Okay, <laughs> I thought you might. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, first um, is one of the personnel um, approvals tonight was to recognize the retirement of Maggie Ryman. Uh, you know Maggie as the face that greets us every morning um, and that doesn't even scratch the surface of everything that she does for us in the uh, high school office. Ms. Trask could not be here tonight, but she did prepare just some comments about Maggie that Ms. Mabel would like to read for us. Maggie announced her retirement as of August 12, 2022, which we just approved or will be approving. In the short time working with her, I've been impressed with her ability to multitask a million items at once, or at least that's how it appears, and to keep a positive attitude. She's been a tremendous asset to my transition into this position, and I cannot thank her enough. Her knowledge of the district and experience far extends the day-to-day -day tasks and will leave a large footprint to fill. I wish her the best in retirement. She will be with us until August 12th. So congratulations uh, to, to Maggie Ryman. Uh, also, we had uh, two permanent appointments in both food service and uh, in our custodial staff, uh, Rebecca Miller and Jackie Slater, who have been doing a wonderful job with us. So congratulations, uh, certainly to them. I don't know if you want to comment at all, Mrs. Miller and Rebecca. Rebecca is just a wonderful asset to the department. She is everywhere, all the time. I see her zipping between both buildings on the regular. Uh, Dave, anything about uh, Jackie Slater? Um, she's very personable. If you need something, Jackie's glad to help you. Uh, she is kind of like Rebecca. We flip flop her from one building to the other. Wherever we need her, she fills in. So she's very easy to get along with. Thank you. So congratulations to them. Uh, and then super excited, it, it always is important to take a minute to recognize any time that 
a Board of Education moves to grant tenure uh, to a teacher. It comes after three or four years of hard work on behalf of the teacher. And I, we do have some of them with us tonight who are being granted tenure this evening. And uh, I will kind of announce them. And if you would just stand if you came here uh, just to be recognized. And then I'll let Miss Mabel say a few uh, words. Um, one of our amazing kindergarten teachers um, who also keeps all of our students running constantly as a leader uh, on the track and field, uh, Melissa Emilio. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, Melissa is, as, as I wrote about her, um, is wonderful with our students no matter what age they are. Um, from kindergarten teacher all the way to our 12th graders, she has them literally running on the track field um, and, and is a, an amazing teacher. She greets her kids with a smile every single day, um, is out in the hallway. She's the only kindergarten teacher who has the cubbies actually out in the hallway, not in the classroom. And so that's a little bit tough for her. She's, she watched them like a hawk, though, and, and uh, the kids all high five, you know, all know all the other big kids as they go by and say hi to them. So um, she's a great addition to our, st our staff, and I'm thrilled to have her. And to be keeping her for a long time. And to be keeping her for a long time. That goes for all of them. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, next is Amanda Galunas. Amanda is an awesome She's a third grade teacher with us. Um, she's one of my biggest data um, gurus. She loves to look at the data of her students and watch how they've grown from one assessment to the next assessment. She's the first one in my office when it's I ready time to talk about how, how much they've grown and look at um, the progress they've made. She loves to see their progress not only in academics but also emotionally and socially and we talk about her students on a regular basis in all of those facets and um, great addition to our staff. So happy to have her for a long time. She has third graders <laughs> writing about oh. grade level. Yes. I mean, we, we talk about third grade as your typical, you know, it's where you transition from learning to read to reading to learn. She's past that, and she has our kids writing like you wouldn't believe. Um, I've seen some of the work posted in the hallway. So, so impressed. Um, and finally, uh, Emily Clerkin is a fifth grade teacher, um, also super involved. <laughs> Clerkin is, uh, Mrs. Clerkin, excuse me, it's Ms. West, it's Mrs. Clerkin now. Um, Mrs. Clerkin is a wonderful addition to our, our staff on the fifth grade team. She works amazingly hard with her, um, her teammates. They work together very closely. They do, um, they stay, you know, consistent with one another, one another. She is always looking to learn. She's always looking to improve um, what's going on for her students what's going on for um, anyone. I, I, we just had a parent-teacher meeting, actually, um, with, with a parent from a student in her classroom. And um, Emily has brought, up, brought in some community uh, organizations that are going to be able to assist that student. The parent couldn't have been more happy, and I was just so proud of her. So I'm thrilled to have Emily as part of our staff for many years to come. Great. Um, and then other folks who couldn't be with us tonight, Mrs. Wilberg is being granted tenure in the area of special education. Um, I don't know if you want to. Sure. Linda Wilberg is a great addition as well. Um, she couldn't be with us tonight, but um, she works with small groups of students and um, does a fantastic job. And we're really happy to have her as part of our team. She also, um, with COVID, we haven't had as many small group um, or um, building level team type of um, events happening, as, as we've talked about many times. A lot of our um, after-school events at the elementary kind of got the kibosh for a while. But she's really, I talked with her today, and she's really looking forward to coming back and being a member of that team and bringing back many of the events that we did for our students after school. So thrilled to have her as well. And as, as I said, all of you for a long time. <laughs> And Thank then you. finally, at the middle and high school, uh, Mr. John Wells was recommended for tenure tonight. Uh, he is constantly contributing unique, novel ideas uh, to the English department. 
Um, he has most recently jumped on our RTI committee, which is response to intervention, which looks at uh, solid ways to provide interventions for students throughout the entire <coughs> building. Um, he gets here before I do every morning and is probably here after me. So those of you who know how the hours I keep, um, you know, he keeps them even longer. Great work for the students and just excited to be offering him tenure as well. So thank you. All in favor? All right. All right. And the motion is carried. Financial reports. Uh, motion, please, to approve the financial. Uh, motion, please, to approve the financial reports as submitted by the treasurer for March thirty first, twenty twenty two. And the second. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? CSE recommendations. A motion, please, to accept the special education report from the Director of Special Education and Student Services for April 30th, 2022, as submitted. So, Warren, and a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any names? The motion is carried. And we will have our principal's reports. This is new. So I'm going to do the principal's reports kind of together because I'm doing for both of us. Um, so I just kind of added to her report. Um, she has two new sixth grade students since our last meeting and I have one new third grade student since our last meeting. So that's our student enrollment. Student successes. Um, we had a scholar recognition dinner and she left already, but um, our student this year was Sylvia Little. And our teacher was Peter Hannigan. For those of you who don't know about our Scholar Recognition Dinner, it's been going on about 20 years. And we uh, each school district in the ONC BOCES and the DCMO BOCES chooses a student to honor. Um, we, we usually choose our valedictorian. I believe we've always chosen our valedictorian in this school. I've worked in other schools that might choose the DAR Good Citizen or um, something, something along that line, but each each school has a criteria that they choose this student. And then the student chooses a, a teacher who they want to recognize as most influencing them. So Sylvia, um, Sylvia chose Mr. Peter Hannigan. And um, it, we had a nice dinner here. Usually you go to Suco um, and have dinner, but with um, COVID, they still are doing a dinner here. We did one last year as well. Um, and But it was beautiful. Um, Chris and her staff did a beautiful dinner for us. Um, we we decorate to the nines. We set the, the bar, and we actually laughed because last year there were um, not very many um, people who had tables made up and you know set nicely and, and looking professional and beautiful. And um, we did. And this year there were many more <laughs> on the on the screen that you could That's see um, that that rivaled us. So. Okay. And that, just rival, that's all. <laughs> National Junior Honor Society induction ceremony was um, last week. There are 18 new members, four of them are eighth graders and 14 are seventh graders. The three through eight math testing is completed and um, we're set to do the fourth and eighth grade performance testing tomorrow. Um, the fourth and eighth grade um, written test will be on the 6th of June. So um, that that's all that's left for three through eight testing. Um, FFA, Ellie Terrence is the new FFA District 4 president, proud of her. The sad mark, mock, excuse me, the sad mock car crash last Friday demonstrated the dangers of drinking and driving, and I think that was a big success. Um, I, in my building, uh, Ms. Glutis, who was just here, had her students reach a 25, thousand minute 
of reading at home. Ms. Rossley, that, Mrs. Rossley, that's one of her teammates in third grade, reached 15,000 minutes of reading at home with their students. Mrs. McAteer is a new grandmother. Um, her son, Tyler, who many of you may have known because he went here too, um, had a little girl named Theodora. They're calling her Teddy. Um, one of my new um, third, or, no, I'm sorry, I said that piece. Um, Kylie McCarthy and Owen Terrence were honored um, at the DAR Oneana um, chapter. All my fifth graders um, for the past several years um, have written an essay, What Does the Flag Mean to Me? Um, and each year, I'm really proud of our kids. We seem to, we seem to score in the top three, one, two, or three, or you know, somewhere in between there. This year, um, Kylie McCarthy came in third in Oneana, and Owen Terrence came in first. Because Owen Terrence came in first, his went on to the state level competition, and he also won first at the state level. So we're really proud of that. Um, I also have Girl Scout Troop number 60673. I got a letter from, from that um, chapter and said that we have 12 girls who in that troop who won the Junior Bronze, Girl Scout Junior Bronze Award. And that's the highest award that you can um, achieve as a Girl Scout. And that was for um, helping our veterans in the community in Delaware County. Um, they, they did um, Thanksgiving dinners for them. They did Christmas dinners for them. They did uh, some, some gifting in there. They used their um, cookie and nuts money to pay for some of, of the gifting that they did. So I'm really proud of them too. So that's for our student successes, that was a big month. Okay, faculty and staff. Um, I already gave you Mitzi McAteer, that was, I goofed, it was in the wrong place. But anyway, uh, Ed Elements provided a reflection PD in collaboration with teachers from Franklin as a culmination to the work that's been completed all year. Um, guidance, Kathy Whitaker and Crystal have begun meeting with DCMO career destinations to work collaboratively together to offer seniors this coming year and work for lower grades in upcoming years, internships, work experience, <coughs> job shadowing, and career exploration opportunities. Um, we've both completed all the lockdown drills in our, in our building, and I will say that the PTA had their first successful um, uh, <laughs> night. Yeah. yeah, it was a kids' <laughs> night out at, at um, the elementary school last week. They had over 200 kids show up, so um, and they asked for donation. They wrote, raised almost two thousand dollars. They asked for donation instead of saying a set price. So that was great for them. Um, even upcoming events. Ready to write? Because <laughs> it's a list. Um, the uh, Athletic Awards Banquet is on the 25th of this month of May. The High Note Festivals are the 27th of May for middle school and the 3rd of June for high school. The U.S. History Regents is June 1st. The Senior Trip is June 1st through June 3rd. The Prom will be at Maple Shade Farm on the 4th of June. The Academic Awards Banquet will be on the 6th of June. Middle school concert is on the 7th of June. The high school concert's on the 9th of June. The FFA banquet is on the 10th of June. The DCMO CTE completer ceremony is on the 13th of June, and Crystal will be representing as the Delaware County, or Delaware Academy representative. Uh, the fourth and fifth grade recital and fifth grade chorus concert is on the 14th of June, and that's at 1 p.m. in the auditorium. On the 16th, we have the elementary field day, and for the first time ever, that I'm really proud of the kids, they, um, the Honor Society reached out to me and asked if they could help plan it and, and put it on for the students. So in conjunction with our PE teachers, Mr. Newman, Mr. Bruce, and Mr. Wake, they are going to put on the, um, the field day for the kids this year. So that, that's exciting. Um, Mr. Bruce, Mr. Wake, and, and Mr. Newman are very thankful for that. And our last day for, oh, I forgot, the last day for um, 7 through 12 will be the 14th of June, and the last day for pre-K through 6 will be the 23rd of June. Any questions? Would you be able to provide 
in my office a copy of those end of year dates so that <laughs> you know what? Date to the board and then you all have it in your email. Perfect. Yes, I would be happy to. So, you you say yes. mentioned that the last day would be um, June 23rd for 6th through kindergarten. Um, sixth grade is in the middle school. They, yeah. they still will be even They do. Way. That happened about three years ago, Mrs. Kelly. Um, the state changed their rules, and, and so um, the grades that cannot be in session during Regents' time is 7 through 12. Pre-K to 6 have to be in school until the end of the school year. Yeah. That, Thank you. Those days. You're welcome. So I have a question? Sure. Okay. So June 14th for 7th? Middle school is seventh, seventh grader. Yes, seventh grade for finals or anything after that, or I don't believe is that so. That's his last day for sure. I believe that's so his last day. Finals will be before that. It's, it's, I need a couple. I don't yeah. know. It's done done. They, they should be done done. If the only exams are reached, the <laughs> um, teachers would let students know okay. individually. But I believe middle, the seventh and eighth grade are okay. done done. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Is that right? It is, and then the eighth graders that are advanced are coming back for regents exams. Thank you, right. Thank you so much. Right. Yeah, thanks, Thank Mr. And, and, that, and uh, just so people out there know why that is, that is so that those teachers can help proctor exams too. Um, so you can't just have one teacher that that teaches U.S. history be the only proctor in the room. You have to have several. So. <coughs> when when do the testing results come in? Yeah. Um. That, that usually is not till the very end of the summer. I, it, it just depends on New York State and how fast they get things turned around. Three, three, not the three, 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 eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. usually it's August before we get yeah. We'll have our eye ready before that, though, Mr. Tucker. <coughs> we will. We will. <laughs> our local source. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so thank much. Yes. You. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thanks a lot. Building and grounds, Mr. Cicio. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, I don't have a whole lot. Um, we're getting our summer projects all lined up. Uh, some of them we've already started. Uh, the auxiliary gym, some of the entranceways, we've already started painting stuff like that we've already started so we're really not waiting till summer to get those started uh on wednesday you'll notice a little bit we're going to be replacing the shut off that goes to the bus garage it doesn't completely shut off which we found out in the last uh water project uh that we had in the bus garage it didn't shut off completely so we will be replacing that on wednesday um out here um our avis we completed they're done for another two years, but the BCS will be due in 2024. Uh, so that's another two years from now. Uh, CWC, they're over, I guess you could say they're kind of over the hump. Uh, they're putting the binder down on the 24th, and then the gutter work to replace all our gutters will be on the 31st. And then they will be putting in the marble after that. So, <coughs> so there you go. Any questions? API and BCS, I'm sorry, I should know that, but remind me. Annual visual inspection. Okay. And the BCS is the building addition. Yes. That was correct. The C was. Yes. Great. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Business Administrator, Mr. Schultz. I'm going to go quick, too, because I've talked a lot the last three months. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, congratulations to the board for the budget passing and actually thank you to the community. Um, I always say this every year. I kind of brag to the business administrators when we ask when they ask what was a pass rate. I'm usually like, ah, like 80s. I don't know. Uh, it was close to 82% this year. We're hovering around 81 to 83%. That's amazing. Uh, so I, I thank you for the, the work that you put into it. I thank the community too. That means a lot to me. I mean, it means a lot to be recognized for that work. So thank you. Uh, that doesn't mean we stop. Uh, I had to tell Lisa this is her first year going through this cycle. You get about six hours of kind of like a <laughs> little cat in the back. You usually sleep that off, and the next day you hit the road doing another 110 miles an hour. So that's what we're doing now. And uh, get ready for audit. Get ready to close out the year. Uh, and then if it's not a capital project at this point, I don't know what we're doing. We're, we've got a lot going on. David talked a little bit about it. CWC is 
probably much more over the hump, but actually they've got a lot done. Uh, and the good news is with that, we of course we're trying to match up the paving portion of the capital project. SCD was, I wouldn't even say dragging their feet, literally like, I don't know if I've seen that paperwork yet and it took two weeks to make some phone calls and we finally on Friday, Thursday I think it was, mm -hmm. they accepted it, got it done over the phone. Four o'clock Thursday I think is when we got the notification. Yeah. <laughs> so what'll happen now is CWC will be assisting with the paving and they will uh, now, you know, we were afraid that the paving would get approved later on down the road after CWC was done and they did their paving portion. Now it can all happen together. I will say it's gonna be a little crazy in the fact that the escalator fees for paving materials right now is going month to month. Mm -hmm. So the pricing that we see for May, very different in June. Uh, so just be prepared for that. So we'll get that all done. Uh, we don't have a timeline yet definitively on paving side of it. They were, I know checking, I think we met last Wednesday regarding that with the owner's meeting. So they're gonna to put together a plan of areas that are gonna be kind of sanctioned and been cut off. And it's gonna get a little crazy, especially coming into the end of the year uh, on areas that we're gonna to have to kind of cordon off day by day. Uh, you know, like David was saying tomorrow, or Wednesday, you'll see a portion of the do loading dock area, that parking area is gonna be closed off. Not the entire area, but a small portion of it. So just kind of strap in at this point. Abatement is done. Uh, we're waiting on the last change order to, to pay that out, so that is complete. Um, we have the regular building project. We have some punch, uh, punch list items that we're kind of doing a little painting here and there. A couple areas to be filled in. Door handles, I think we're on back order. Uh, roof drains, a couple on those. Uh, tennis courts, uh, we have... I saw that you had this as an update to the board too. Go I ahead. I'm yeah. checking stuff off if you guys. <laughs> right. You want to go? You head out now. Just go. Just get out of here. Um, so tennis courts. We're looking. They sent us a tentative timeline starting around basically when the, when the students left. Uh, we may be able to start a little earlier than that. Uh, lights have been ordered. Uh, so I'm going to check on uh, this week to see if we want to move that timeline up a little bit. We were more afraid of the noise. Um, coming from that area, but if we're doing any testing regions, it's going to be more in the center of the district with the, the gyms. So we're hoping that that doesn't affect anything. Uh, and they, that timeline goes throughout the summer. So, and Capital Outlay Project, epoxy is about eight to ten weeks out right now from order date. So we're looking at middle of the summer, possibly mid-August. We uh, there's a meeting Wednesday regarding the, this is the terrazzo floor in the elementary. This is fixing that area that we've, when the project first started over by the kindergarten wing. Mm -hmm. We are, we want them to be 100% sure that they can get it done before school opens. If they can't, we're going to have to kind of push that up or maybe do the demo work and then push up the, uh, the actual laying of the terrazzo later on in the year. We'll monitor it as we go along. Uh, that's really, I have. That's all I have. Um, you mentioned the abatement project. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, we met uh, finance committee when we met last <laughs> week. I think I had given you a number. I want to say it was like six hundred and twenty, five eighty. Five eighty. Five eighty. It's going to be more than that. Actually, it's about six hundred twenty thousand. I think where we ended. We, if you remember correctly, we kind of went into that not knowing what to expect. Uh, you're talking about I think it was forty eight thousand square feet underneath this building that was basically considered to be contaminated, according to um, DC. Uh, we ended up figuring out a way to do it. Not We went to the voters with a $1.1 million proposition. We finished almost $500,000 less than that. So um, we just kind of looked at areas that we didn't have to, to really kind of tackle within the scope, and we kind of modified it and we went along. So we will not be bonding that entire amount, that $1.1 million. We'll only bond what we spent. Uh, bonding for that will happen in December. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Question. All right. Just to reinforce that last part, though, Tammy, you're right. That's that's not good news. That's great news. Yep. You know, I think it just demonstrates again the 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 fiscal uh, conservative nature and stewardship that the district takes when we take on projects like this, especially when we're asking the community to vote you know, on these. 
to have community support for a $1.1 million project and be actively looking at ways to ensure that that is spent wisely, conservatively, and appropriately while still addressing the problem and to come in almost $400,000 shy of that is commendable. So, you know, truly great job in your leadership with that. I would actually say it has to be really between LaChase and Highland on this one. Because I think we met with them a lot on this. We and did. We could have easily said, all right, spend up to the 1.1 million cap. And they kept coming back to us saying, you don't have to do that. No, you they would This agree. way, you know, you. So uh, I really commend them to their act. They've been excellent throughout every single project we've had right now. Meetings. And continue to do that. They, I get a little annoyed. They call a lot. But uh, they're very, they're great. They so are. I do give them a excellent. lot of credit. Yeah, it was a team effort for sure. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. Food services, Christine Miller. I would be great. I don't have a lot. <laughs> um, I just wanted to give you an update on our meals. Um, we have 16 serving days in so far in May. We still have another five more to go till we're to June. Um, so our high school average right now is about 96, um, and the girls are excited every day. They come in and they tell me, oh, this is where we're at today, you know, and we're doing really well at the kiosk. We have some students coming down to the cafeteria, um, so almost 100 every day. Elementary, our average is still right around 200 breakfast um, every morning. And then for lunches, the high school's average is like 235, and elementary is 257, and again, my staff were saying, how many doubles did we serve today? How many triples? You know, they are just eating us out of everything. Um, and I'm excited to have our academic awards banquet back. So as Julie mentioned, that's June 6th. And then we are helping Mark Klein and Michelle Summers with the FFA banquet on June 10th. So it's really all I have. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Special Education and Student Services, Kristen Jr. Hi, everyone. Um, not a lot to talk about today. We, you approved 27 meetings, recommendations from meetings since our last time together. Um, we're really moving through those meetings. I'm excited um, right now. I think we'll be done the second week of June with meetings, so they're moving right along. Um, 13 CSC meetings re-evaluations and annual reviews, as well as CPSC um, initial evals, um, as well as 12 504 annual reviews. So we're moving through through all of them. Um, we will hold our last special education PD. We say the last, the best for last is our testing accommodations where we're really calibrating the team around test read for regents exams. We're using New York State's model of, of um, acceptable um, accommodation so that you know we have a lot of teacher a lot of special ed teachers who are going to be proctoring exams that they're not used to being in so we're making sure that everyone is calibrated um, believe it or not there's you know a list of like 50 different math symbols and you've got to be able to say this is this so we have all these cheat sheets so um, we're really excited to offer that PD for them on the 26th um, which is on Thursday so we'll be able to do that um, we continue to work on the master schedule as we have new meetings and um, make recommendations for next year. Um, Kylie Lamaru started today. We are so excited. We are now officially full staff. So again, I appreciate you um, appointing her. She spent the entire day um, getting to know sixth and seventh graders. She was at lunchtime. Her office looks great. Um, can't thank Dave and your staff, you know, for coming in and helping us. Um, get that set up for her, but um, she's really excited to be here and we're excited to have her. Um, let's see, again, continuing to tweak the master schedule. Brilliant Pathways. We have our last mentor training on Wednesday. They've got their t shirts. Um, we're going to do our last big push to finish our essential skills of networking, and I think it's collaboration. Um, off the top of my head, I don't remember it, but uh, Chris, thanks. For the cookies ahead of time, um, we're excited to celebrate them. And then our big epic um, kind of career fair that's going to include um, some of our seniors um, talking to kids about what their elementary students about where they're going to school or what they're going to do after college or after here. We're excited about that transition with our mentor program. The mentors are helping with career plans in the elementary this month, and um, we're just so excited. There's so many positives with Brilliant Pathways. 
And next board meeting, um, we hope to do a really cool presentation for you on all the things that we did this year. We're meeting with our liaison for the last time tomorrow, reviewing our um, end of year assessment, um, school of distinctions looking very, very good people. Um, and we've documented it really, really well. So really excited, money well spent. Can't wait to thank the Kellogg Foundation officially for for all the work that we're able to do with that. Um, my student successes, we had five students complete the Brilliant Pathways CCR training, college and career readiness training, and then we're gonna be able to use those students to kind of train our other students moving forward, and we continue to, to wanna to build that CCR training. We're gonna look for um, community members to do some of that work as well, so we've got lots of big plans for next year, so awesome. That's it for me, any questions? Thank you. Any questions for me? Thank you. Technology, Mr. Parziva. To give you a recap of what we've been working on, um, one of the kind of pop-up projects that came up was a track timing system. If you hadn't heard and seen that, it's one of those things that you just have to jump in and dig into and spend a couple days on to get that sorted out. And we were able to get that successful with a little bit of time to spare at the end. Um, and they were able to time it, a meet and be ready for next year. Um, doing multiple timings or going to other events at different schools and timing in those events as well. Um, we're continuing with our teacher laptop rollout and new students um, doing end of the year ordering. Um, we met, Mike and myself met when I was here earlier. Uh, we collaborated on the budget hearing and the meet the candidates night to try and give the optimum uh, situation for the public to view in the online format and we feel like that worked out really well. Uh, currently we're uh, working towards a training this week for teachers who are getting the new laptops. Um, we'll be continuing to support the students with loaners. I think today we had 25 students come to us during the day. I forgot my device, it's not charged, let me swap this out, kind of those day-to-day -day things. Um, and we're current, presently working with a uh, 21, 2021 uh, graduate who's gonna be interning with us over the summer as part of the CEO workforce. Um, he'll be in on Wednesday, kind of shadowing me, kind of on a volunteer basis, and then over the summer, he'll be doing it uh, a little bit more formally through the CEO uh, program. Uh, Is that also, my major, Luke? Is it cybersecurity or yes, computer science? Yes, it's a cybersecurity uh, track, so you know, trying to give him those practical you know, ideas, webinars, those those experiences that will kind of inform his, his learning on that side. Um, as part of that, uh, I'll be kind of giving him ideas about what we're doing in terms of our ordering for the summer. Um, kind of in the summer, we'll probably get into some of our firewall and revamping our filtering and we're, we're upgrading our uh, backup services. So quite a, quite a bit going on and we still have the uh, end of the year collection of all the student devices and any of those uh, types of issues that need to be resolved and reissue devices when it comes to the fall. So that's really, in a nutshell, what's been going on with technology. And our technology plan that you submitted? Oh yeah, that, that's- Was accepted minor. by the state yeah, so and approved? Technology plan that's is approved, great. you know, so that's a, a big piece that gives us yeah. for the next three years. You've all seen the, the goals on that and, uh, and easily, I'll send the the approved copy to Kelly so she can send it with the, the board and we'll have it posted up on our website as well. So. Good job. Questions? All right. Thank you. Yeah, so we need to get that June agenda. Okay, and finally, transportation, Mr. Merciful. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, we keep it busy. Uh, sports, the uh, JV and varsity sports going down, um, so modified going and all the tracks. So, uh, this last weekend, I had six drivers, including myself, participated in advanced drivers class, which was very successful. And I find um, I've done this before in the past. It's interesting how the different topics have evolved, and different things have changed, and found it very, very beneficial and it, and it was received well by all that participated. Um, other than that, we're continuing to move by. Thank you. Yes. 
is summer event. Super I, I was quickly putting check marks on all of my things I was going to report on, especially when Julie was speaking. So thank you for that, team. Um, first, I just want to congratulate uh, Lucy Kelly, Sean Letty, um, and who was Seth. Seth. And Seth. Hey, I'm looking right at him. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm being reelected uh, to our Board of Education. I know Carrie spoke briefly thanking the community for. Um, you know, for passing the budget, which I will reiterate. But also, thank you for giving us uh, continued stability on our board. Um, I'm just excited to continue the great work with our team uh, intact. Thank you to the candidates, though, who did participate and show interest in our district um, and in uh, having a, a wonderful campaign. Uh, again, it's, it's a reflection on the community support for our district and the degree to which people are paying attention and are appreciative of what we're doing. So congratulations, um, and just thrilled to have another three years here. Um, along the uh, same note with board members, our student board member, Abby Leahy, uh, next meeting will be her last meeting with us. Um, it has flown by, it has gone super quick, uh, so we'll take some a little bit of time on the June meeting and, and celebrate uh, Abby and her contributions as our, um, you know, our first student board member, which has been so successful that we have already put out applications mm -hmm. uh, encouraging our current year juniors uh, to apply for this seat uh, into next year. Those applications close, I believe, June 1st. So we're hoping to bring someone to you for a reorg um, to take Abby's place at the table. As Carrie had mentioned, with the paving, we're gonna, be moving right along now that everything is approved and in line and uh, two things number one thank you to our community for uh, listening to and following all of the kind of the day-to-day -day changes especially pertains to parent drop-off in the mornings here um, thank you to our bus drivers who and, and mr um, um, and mr versport uh, who have helped us to reorganize traffic patterns to keep us moving. We will continue to communicate as quickly as we can any changes that will affect those morning patterns. Um, and also, I got so excited about tenure uh, recognition during the personnel um, and uh, that we skipped right past the fact that Kristen Shearer um, has also submitted her resignation they approved tonight. Um, and I'm proud to say that it's to accept a superintendency in Milford. So congratulations. Um, you know, we had a lot of work to do when we brought Kristen on board and her leadership in both special education and on the student services side uh, in collaboration with our principals, of course. We've moved mountains um, in, in the time that she's been with us in the past year and a half. Um, and we're up to be a school, to recognize as a school of distinction for our working brilliant pathways under her leadership. So I just want to make, take a minute, recognize Kristen for her contributions in the short time she's been with us, wish her luck in her future endeavors just down the road in Milford as she takes a, the seat as superintendent there. So. Um, and hot off the press, I think we just won something in tennis, didn't we, Mr. Hay? Yes, we did. The first round of the team competition, which is a new event they're having this year. Um, sectionals are basically you follow the track of an individual player, but they do add up team totals. And we did win sectionals for the first time in a long, long time. It had to be over probably 15 or 20 years. Oh, so that was a big thing last week. But then today we won our, won our first round of the team competition. So we will be. Um, I think facing the winner of Maine and well, Johnson City tomorrow, and that's at Walton. Um, just because their courts are, are available and, and can play are playable, ours are not yet. But that's tomorrow. So congratulations to our tennis team. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Board committee reports. A. L. Kellogg. We actually met. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah. You can start on that. All right. Um, so basically, um, well, we discussed um, possible speakers that we could start bringing back to the school. Um, 
and we, uh, the Brightfield Press has applied for funding from the Memorial Fund, and we have I think we approved sixteen thousand dollars for the Brightfield Press. What's exciting about the speakers is under um, uh, Superintendent Zimmerman's suggestion, the uh, theme will be mental health. So we are uh, hoping to get four speakers in all, one for each quarter, uh, to just address that to the student body. Uh, we're trying to get at least one to speak to the elementary as well as high school. But uh, predominantly right now it is uh, middle school, high school, and that's exciting. And we're also thinking about uh, trying to incorporate uh, Bright Hill a little bit more with the school. Mm -hmm. And that is another endeavor we're trying to do. And I believe one of the speakers would also do a parents' night. Mm -hmm. That would uh, sort you through all the different grade levels. And then, uh, also set up time so parents can come in here and speak. That's it. That's it. Okay. Athletic committee. Yeah, we discussed um, possibilities for when there's an interest in a specific team where there isn't a large number of potential um, student athletes. Um, it may be a sport that is kind of off the beaten path from what we normally do and there are a few times throughout our history where this has come up and we've addressed it a number of ways. We, we have done sports partnerships in the past with other schools that have teams. It's a little more challenging if no one around has a team that someone can attach on. Um, so we're continuing to kind of explore options for this one particular case with really no we can come to any resolutions, but we offered some advice, right, Lucy to Jeff to he's gonna go back and continue to explore what options there are. Um, if there are any. There may not be any. We're not sure. Right. What else? I have nothing more to add really. But that's mm -hmm. about it. That was about it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, board liaison committee? Did you don't no no reason to come? Okay. That's actually good news. Good news. Uh, capital project. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Well, Carrie talked about the test words, talked about the abatement, uh, he talked about the terrazzo. <laughs> so, let's see. The golf is updating us today. We talked about being. Uh, uh, the playground's been ordered for us, uh, the, the pre K. So that's been ordered, and the bullet wood mulch, I believe, has all been ordered for both the new pre K and the existing. Too, that they're continuing to explore options for evaluating engineering the tennis course to some time save money. And the right. overall cost of that project is ongoing, so it's good. But everything else I think has been talked about. A finance committee. Yeah, we'll talk about that. A lot of it has been covered with other mm -hmm. presentations. Um, I can again give uh, kudos to Mr. Schultz for his. Budgeting, um, especially when I came to fuel oil, where he budgeted for an amount that we were able, even in today's environment, to come in just a little bit under. So that was uh, good forecast, very good forecasting. As long as it's like 75 or whatever, it's 30. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else up? Yeah, uh, we see. Um, we talked about the 
cost of the summer programs that are scheduled, and that appears to be all within our grant that we have, so we're really encouraged about that. The CSEA negotiations continue, um, and we gave a quick look at the AL catalog report about where that stands, and hopefully almost looked at their retirement or any investments lately because it is depressing, and uh, the Kellogg fund is, you know, well managed, but certainly not exempt to market adjustments. So there's definitely a decline in what we have um, right now. But anyway, um, it's up today. It was up today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. after yesterday. <laughs> but um, yeah, the last, I think we're most. I was. We had a presentation on our four hundred one k today, and most um, plans and or large investments are off by sixteen to seventeen percent year to date. So, if you don't check off, then now's not the time to start. Checking. That's right. <laughs> but teachers are in great shape. You have these defined benefit plans. I feel good mm -hmm. about that. <laughs> I think that was it. Yeah, I think so. Uh, policy. Policy. So uh, we work on the community use of school facilities policy. Um, pretty much saying that legal not for profit organizations will um, also not be charged for use of facilities uh, or the purpose of facilities for not for profit or personal gain. Um, there will be no fees charged for the use. We talked about adding a discretionary statement in there. At the superintendent's discretion. Um, that's kind of it there. I wanted to know if anybody got a chance to look at this mm -hmm. and we wanted to add or take anything away. Um, anyway. Well, my only comment is that it's nice if we can get it. Um, depending on what type of group it is, if we can get an FYI about large events that may be happening, um, only because if they're different than, if they're something that doesn't normally happen here, and I'll give you an example in a second, it, you, you kind of hear about it in a funny way, you don't know, and it's, it's odd. So if, if that does, for example, there was a huge funeral here, like 12, you know, 15 years ago. Okay. And it was. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm like, what? No. <laughs> it, it was a while ago. It just okay. was, it was big. And it was, I guess it wasn't that long ago. It just was kind of like, oh my God, you know, there's like 300 people there and everyone was kind They said, oh, the school is beautiful. No one knew it really was happening. Oh. And so that's just, a, I think, an element of communication, which you probably would do anyway, but just to let us. Sure. No, if something yeah. like that's about to happen. Mm -hmm. it, you know, if it wasn't any issues, it just was. Nothing in the past two years. So that was my only comment, it was just to communicate if there's something sure. big that's of on, course. On, you know, out of the ordinary. By the um, <clears throat> discretionary, statement we were referring to, we wanted to make sure that there was language in there that if the superintendent, we had a situation that might not be black and white covered in, in the policy that she has the flexibility to not charge or mm -hmm. do yeah, that makes sense. something along, along those lines. This is the policy. There should be a copy in all of your folders because this is up for a second reading tonight. So the, the discretionary statement was really specific to the clause in the second paragraph as it pertains to residents or students of the district. Um, there is currently a requirement that legal not-for-profit organizations will also not be charged for use of facilities provided all participants are residents or students of the district. Could there be circumstances where we have a not-for-profit but they may not all necessarily be residents, but it is it still makes a lot of sense to host them here. And so to be able to have the discretion to make those kind of calls, um, you know, outside of the black and white policy statement, I think makes a lot of sense. So that's the clause specifically that the discretionary statement would pertain to. That's not included in here, 
So if that's something that the board is interested in, we could include this for a third reading at the June meeting again, um, and then with approval at that meeting. Any thoughts? I think it's important to add yeah. yeah. that. Right. Anybody opposed to that? We also uh, just started the discussion about around the preschool policy. Um, I believe that the was it May thirtieth was the registration deadline mm -hmm. for um, being a resident or having established residency. And we just, um, we didn't even look at it, but we know that it's up for um, contemplation or discussion at an upcoming meeting, our um, conditional appointment policy, temporary personnel, because um, we believe that there may have been some legal changes that would affect that policy. So we're just yeah, changes to the statutory language. Yeah. So we're fact that gathering that information now and we'll see how it involves yeah, that's in some it's a policy thirty seven additional appointments and temporary personnel. So this pertains to policy that oversees student teachers, interns, substitute teachers, um, those kind of things. And it was just brought to our attention that the um, Codified the law has been since been repealed since the approval of this policy. So we're getting more information on that, making sure that we are also up to date to follow suit. So more to come. Uh, technology committee. I don't know if you have anything more other than great news that we got at Mr. Parzibas. So as mentioned just a moment ago, we have the second reading of policy 6768 in the use of school facilities. Um, there's no action to be taken and we will make the discussed adjustments and present it to you at our next meeting for a final reading and adoption. And we will have a, an update from Superintendent Zimmerman on the tennis court project. Yeah, this is just um, this is just real quick. Uh, as I had shared with you, there was a document that I attached to one of my recent updates following a meeting that we had, had with Clark Companies, um, who will be one of the the primary subcontractor on the co-op bid for the tennis courts. Um, and I think. Somebody, Seth or Sean, or maybe both, had mentioned in the reports that we're continuing to look at cost savings associated with that project. They had proposed a couple specific cost savings that, that we thought made a lot of sense that we discussed in both finance and capital project, um, specific to the, um, the, the pitch at which the tennis courts sit, um, and the ability to reuse some of the existing sub base as a cost savings. Um, when the architects designed or redesigned that tennis court space, they were not privy really to history of you know, what the, currently exists um, on those tennis courts. And so the ability, now that we're dealing with the actual contractors, they have additional information to help inform the actual execution of the project. Um, so between that and um, another line item, it gave us an opportunity to recuperate I want to say about $60,000, between 60 and 80, 86, thank you, Mitchell, um, off the top of that project. So that's where we currently stand um, as far as that goes. We're continuing to, to look at that, and we continue to await the final numbers um, associated with, with all of that. But that continues to move along at a, at a pretty quick pace. New business. Whereas 
first one to Education Law 20346B. Six months or more <clears throat> have elapsed since the May 2021 annual budget vote and Board of Election, Board of Education elections. And whereas upon the information and belief of the Board of Education, there have been no challenges or proceedings commenced. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that the Board of Education of the Delaware Academy Central School District at Delhi does and hereby authorizes the district clerk to unseal and open the wooden ballot boxes and destroy the official ballots contained therein, together with the unused ballots, if any. Any motion? So moved. Second. 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 James. James. Now it's going to be 21. Oh. Yes, that's right. For 2021. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the motion is carried. Certification of results of the 2022 annual budget vote and Board of Education elections voter propositions, budget 614 yes votes, 139 no votes. There were three seats up for three year terms with the results as follows. Sean Letty received 369 votes. Lauren O'Leary received 252 votes. Lucy Kelly received 498 votes. Nathaniel McCarthy received 255 votes. Seth Haight received 488 votes. And Sean Seaport received 309 votes. Be it resolved in accordance with Section 2502 of the Education Law that candidates Sean Letty, Lucy Kelly, and Seth Haight are hereby re-elected to three-year terms commencing on July 1st, 2022, expiring June 30th, 2025, as declared by the Board of Election, Board of Education. Whereas the Board of Education has examined and tabulated such statements and determined the number of votes cast for the 2022 school district budget, it is hereby declared that the 2022 school district budget passed with 614 votes in favor and 139 votes against. A motion, please, to accept this. And it probably should not be. So I was going to say, should we? So we have the form without us. Yeah. And James, thank you. Any questions or comments? I'll say again, thank you to the community for showing up in record numbers to support our budget and reelect our three board members. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any names? The motion is carried. A motion, please, to accept a donation in the amount of $80 from St. John's Episcopal Church for use in the backpack program. So moved. Okay, we see and set. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Again, thank you to our community for being so generous and supportive. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion is carried. Be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Delaware Academy Central School District at Delhi hereby approves a new contract for Mrs. Nancy Hine, District Treasurer, for a period of July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2025, setting forth the terms and conditions of her employment, authorizes payment thereunder, and authorizes Superintendent Kelly and Zimmerman to execute said employment agreement on behalf of the school district. Motion, please. Oh, and a second. Second. Laura, thank you. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Motion is carried. Be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Delaware Academy Central School District at Delhi hereby approves a new contract. For Mrs. Elizabeth Marino, payroll clerk, tax collector, substitute registrar, for a period of July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2025, 
setting forth the terms and conditions of her employment, authorizes payment thereunder, and authorizes Superintendent Kelly M. Zimmerman to execute said employment agreement on behalf of the school district. Motion, please. So moved. All right, second. second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is carried. Whereas bid proposals were submitted by DCML BOCES on behalf of Delaware Academy Central School District at Delphi for local suppliers to provide solid waste removal to Delaware Academy Central School District Delphi for the academic year 2022-2023, and whereas Delaware Academy Central School District at Delphi received and reviewed bid proposals from vendors in solid waste removal and Casella Waste Management submitted the only bid in the amount of $7,800 to provide solid waste removal services. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education awards the bid for solid waste removal to Casella Waste Management for the academic school year 2022-2023. Motion, please. Uh, are they currently? We, uh, yes. Okay. Sean? And a second? Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. <coughs> scary. Um, we have several resolutions to approve uh, request a surplus. One for athletics, um, one to remove books from inventory from the elementary school library, and another to remove books from inventory from middle school, high school, technology, agricultural classrooms. And we'll take all of these in one resolution. Motion, please. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Any Motions carried. <coughs> and we are back to public comments. We have no public. <laughs> but on the off chance, anyone, uh, we welcome comments and questions during the session, but they will not respond to these comments or questions at this time. Items or issues which the board may consider for action or discussion will be placed on the board agenda. <coughs> Contacting the district clerk or superintendent one week prior to the board meeting. Okay, board comments. Trustee Shepherd, start with you. Trustee Hay. Um, once again, I think the student input on the backpacks is uh, is terrific, and I I love to see. That passion from our students. I think it's a great life lesson. If you want something changed, you work through the process, and um, you know you may not always get the result the first time. You may have to refine. It sounds like that process happened, but coming forward to us with that kind of confidence in the answers and the research was, I think, terrific. So um, great job. If you can pass that back to anyone that you know that was involved, I'd be please. Um, I'm excited about all the end of year events, so the reminder on that would be terrific just to make sure you don't miss any of the initial sense of that awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and congrats to uh, Sean and Lucy. Um, look forward to you know, more time as well as everybody else on the board. Um, and then, you know, I'll just say again, I really think it's great that our community cares so much about our school and that, that many people came out and voted. It's a great sign. I mean, if you look around at some of the other election results, you just don't see that kind of passion. So um, that was a really, really good sign. Very encouraging. That's all. Thank you. Trustee Redden? I have that as well. Um, and in terms of just being in the board with, with all of you, um, it, it's such a special opportunity. And when we had our board development, our professional development at one time, and we learned about the different governance styles, um, and we were put in all these different categories. Um, we had 
what, at least one person in each category of, of board governance. So um, I'm really excited to have that balance with all of you. And um, uh, secondly, um, it is Teacher Appreciation Month. And I'm so grateful for all of our teachers here. Um, it was really great to hear Mark talk about that long list of people who just helped his mm -hmm. kid through that anxiety. Um, and oftentimes, like most of the time, our teachers are that, like the first line of defense always. Mm -hmm. They're part of the backbone of, of our society. And um, our kids come to school to see them, to learn from them. And I'm grateful that all eyes are on our kids. So there's that. And it's really nice to see the students uh, present here. And I look forward to um, the change that they'll bring it up because of all of your efforts. Trustee Hill? Um, like um, Trustee Eight, I would like to thank all the voters who came out um, to support the budget and to vote for the six candidates. Um, Mr. Uh, Schultz uh, complimented or praised the board for the budget, but we know we couldn't have possibly done it without him. And so uh, my kudos to him. Uh, I'd also like to uh, give a bravo to Trustee Reba for coming to various committee meetings uh, to learn and observe. Uh, it was the first time I've ever uh, heard of a board member doing that. And uh, I think it's a great uh, way to understand the workings of the different committees. Um, I'd also like to mention that every time there is a fundraiser at the school, whether it be uh, a chicken and biscuit or when we had the AAU tournament for Academy Hoops, Mrs. Miller and her staff um, bend over backwards to help. and uh, and and. Yes, they pay for the food, but they don't pay for Mrs. Miller's time because she wants them to make more money. So um, it is appreciated. So thank you. And that's it. Thank you. Trustee Tucker? Um, I just want to say congratulations to the of you. And um, look forward to being on board. That's it. Trustee Hi. Uh, just echo the comments of these other board members and, and again just want to congratulate Sylvia and Owen and the um, recent inductees to the uh, National uh, Honor Society. Congratulations. And Abby. Uh, thank you for listening to the presentation. It was definitely not easy to put together and figure out and I'm sure it was not easy for them to get up there. Um, but I feel like I chose Delhi's finest to do that. <laughs> um, they were really good. Um, and I'm really excited that it, it all works out that students will have the option because um, I know before lockers got taken away it was hard definitely to go to my locker and carry so many binders but then when lockers got taken away it was heavy to carry every single binder in my backpack. So having um, you know, the option to use both is, I think, super important. And I think it's cool to see that when the students have concerns about something or don't agree, that you know and they're open about it instead of just sitting back and kind of accepting the way things are that, not that they're like challenging authority, but they're solution-based, um, solution-focused, and want to make a positive change in share their side of the story and how they feel so it improves all those relationships that Tom and Sylvia were talking about. So I appreciate you all for you know supporting us and listening. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I remind you of some important upcoming dates. Our next regular Board of Education meeting is Monday, June 13th. 2022 in the High School Media Library Center at 5 p.m. It is anticipated that the board will convene an executive session at 5 and return to open session at 6. 
The deadline for items to be placed on the board agenda is the Tuesday prior to each Board of Education meeting. If you have any questions, please contact the district clerk at 607-746-1306. And I will now take a motion to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter with no action to be taken. So Second, second. Okay. Thank you. And if anybody wants a real quick break, we'll 